you know what? I think I've decided what to do going forward when speaking on films in this kind of sub-genre slash genre of film. We all know there's a particular franchise that does exist already in the ether out there, and it's so prevalent this film even mentions it. I think going forward, out of respect for films like this, and in this case of this review, it might be best just to not even bring it up. Because I want these films to stand on their own legs. The other films in question are very well established, very well known, that needs no assistance or introduction. It's literally a, if you know, you know. But out of respect, I think it's best if we just judge this on its own merits, huh? And today we have Monkey Man. Gotta admit, I was iffy on the title when the trailer first dropped, but I've long since come around. Man, excited to talk about this one. Uh, if, for those that don't know, Monkey Man like just came out, I, I think as I'm recording this probably a week ago. It is a certain actor's directorial debut, an actor that I'm fond of. Before we get into all that, I did want to make mention, it's kind of like a fun little... <sighs> I don't even know if this is really accurate to say. I was trying to do research, right? These last couple of years, I've been trying to delve more into the realm of like Indian cinema, right? Or the, the various subsections and subgenres uh, of Indian cinema. It all started when I posted my review for RRR, which I thought was excellent. <laughs> like, like five out of five, fantastic movie. I think maybe I gave it a low five out of five. And various members of Indian community uh, recommended other films for me. I've watched Bahubali. I've watched Bahubali 2. There's a whole list they gave me that I've been severely slacking on, but I would love to watch those as well. So watching this, like it, it the film, uh, from what I looked up, the film is set in India. It's getting a mainstream release, mostly in North America and it's a mixture of mostly English speaking, but also more of the native tongue when they're there. And I heard rumors it wasn't being released in India. So I guess my question is, would this be considered American cinema or still Indian? And if so, I know definitely not Bollywood. Would it be like Tollywood, like Taluga? I'm curious if anybody of um, the Indian persuasion is in the chat, then by all means uh, inform me. The point that I'm trying to make is that it's cool to see a film like this that is mostly rooted in Indian culture and cinema be, get, a, get a North American release as such. And I think it's mainly because uh, a certain director and his production company gave him a helping hand, or should we say paw. <laughs> but yeah, it's cool to see this making an American release and I think that uh, our leading boy slash director really helped. A directorial debut of an actor that I'm a huge fan of, Mr. Dev Patel. Also really cool because tech you're I did the research here, hang on. Technically, Dev Patel is British, but looking into his history, his parents, both from Kenya, but also both of Gujarati Indian descent. So, technically, I, you know, Dev's obviously got a little bit of it in him, you know? Cool to see excellence in Indian cinema get North American exposure and get more of a wider, like, international release. That's, I'm, I'm here for it. Now, again, feel free to correct me. Because when I reviewed RRR, I called it Bollywood instead of Tollywood. And when I reviewed When Evil Lurks, a movie I loved, by the way, people were very quick to tell me that it was not Spanish, but it was actually filmed in Argentina. And that's a whole other can of worms right there. It is Dev Patel's directorial debut. Aside, technically, IMDb says he's done a couple like short films, so there is that. He has starred in other things that I have loved him from. Two most notable, one that you'd probably remember if you've been watching movies for a while, but he played older Jamal in the movie Slumdog Millionaire way back in the day. I say way back in the day, like it was 1920 or something. But my personal favorite, Sir Gawain, old Gawain from uh, the, Green, the Green Knight. The positives at first, so it's uh, this is really good. It's, it's really great. It's a fun film. It's hyper violent. It's great. I would never say it's like ever gets too violent. I suppose it's up to opinion, right? But as far as this genre of film goes, that revenge thriller drama, I mean, we've seen it played out time and time again in varying degrees of success and execution. But the premise remains. Somebody's wronged, time goes by, they go on a quest for vengeance, and then either one of two things happens. Either one, they succeed, uh, but at what cost? Or two, 
Perhaps they get to a point where they could succeed and realize that it's at this point they'd be too far gone or that it's not worth it, yada yada. It's one of the two. But, but this movie, once again, puts us in the shoes of somebody who's just trying to get vengeance for their family and for what they've lost and also fight for the, the lower class, uh, the, well, the slums, basically. But uh, but the execution was great on this. So for one, it's, it's like, uh, for, at least from an American like myself, it's cool to see that kind of different cultural take I, I never knew about the, the the monk the monkey man for lack of a better term i never knew that story so learning the story the power behind it and then they kind of delve more into like spirituality and you know shiva vishnu are tossed around in there and you learn how the culture factors into like the life and what our main character played by dev how he uses that as a kind of almost like the batman in a way kind of like adopt that persona or that mentality or that spirituality all that to try to say it's really great to see like new creativity and different angles of how to approach this genre of film subgenre injected into it the action great stuff i have said it once i'll say it again like i i like action i like violence and in this case even more importantly i like uh like bloody gory violence uh, now I'm not gonna say it's like, oh my God, limbs flying everywhere and like people exploding. It's not like ultra, ultra violent gore, but it is very violent. I mean, people will get stabbed, people will get beaten to death, beat up, blood flying, broken bones and such, people getting shot, like all, all that type of stuff. I just like how it's all that violence that normally a film like this that was PG-13 would shy away from. This film shows, also there's just creative little fight scenes and the choreography is great. I believe that Dev himself, I think what he, what, cracked a couple ribs, broke his wrist or his hand or something. I mean, this man, this man went hard in the paint. I think he did a lot of his own stunts. I think he's even a black belt or something of that nature. But uh, yeah, it's just it, everything, every all the hits hit in this movie. It felt violent, but he was also, he's a slender boy, which by the way, would kill for his body. But <laughs> like little boxer fighter also gets the kicks in there eventually. So, I mean, he's just beating people down and punching through them and moving on. So it's incredibly fun to watch. Like whenever the action picks up it's just like boom boom everything's just boom 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 and you're just watching like man all right this is, this is the, the fists are flying also the visuals and cinematography i mean you can see it in the poster itself there's some really cool shots in this film i love the use of lighting and the cinematography adds like this like dark texture to it it's almost like a diet uncut gems it doesn't quite have that same graininess to it but everything definitely has like color correction to a point where things feel like dark or damp or dingy downtrodden even when you're in the the, the higher echelons of society in this movie and people are just like casually doing coke or drinking or abusing people and women or whatnot like even in those rooms it's a little bit cleaner but it still feels like dirty but also just like like clean dirty just rich like blood money type of stuff here's the funny part this film actually is pretty funny <laughs> it's by no means a comedy but whenever there's comedic moments injected for levity i think all the jokes hit for me like nothing was ever like dumb comedy or just really obvious puns it was just either visual gags or funny little things written into the script or whatnot i call her nikki minaj big bumper nice headlights let's boogie comedy and the performances just in general like the actors are all great the comedic timing is great everybody brings a certain energy on set but it's your underdog monkey man hero uh, a slimy little assistant or a conniving bitch ceo or a villainous police chief just like just dripping with machismo and evil somehow now we get to the cons uh i do have a couple things to say about the film first of all speaking of cons uh ign i think i've officially come around uh, is crap Act, by the way, like IGN gave Dial of Destiny, Five Nights at Freddy's, and Monkey Man, what, all the same score? I think they gave, gave them all a four. I think they're just doing it for clicks at this point. To give a, a movie that low of a rating, it's like if I were to give something like a one or a two, that implies the movie is like broken on a fundamental level and does not function as such. Take all reviews, even Rotten Tomatoes, take their all their reviews with a grain of fucking salt, like I swear. It's just go see a movie, get your own opinion, then listen to others and read about it. So my only complaints about the film, in the end of the first act slash beginning of the second act, I think when the action first starts picking up not constantly but some of the action i have to admit does have fairly shaky camera work especially when we're outside and in traffic and i know it's the point 
you're meant to feel what the main character's feeling disorientation or whether it's just the 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 frenetic energy of what's going on or if they're kind of not quite all there they're a little bit out of it and they're going to be seeing things shaking and moving and driving and juking sure that's all fine and dandy but i personally just don't like it when direction in film gets super shaky during action and a lot of quick cuts and it's hard to, hard to see i could more or less follow this no problem but there were some moments early on where it was pretty shaky now as the film progresses i feel like it gets gradually better and better it gets less shaky there are there is still like a lot of movement and a lot of pans and some quick cuts here and there but you follow the action, you can follow the, the carnage pretty pretty well, but I would be remiss if I didn't say that early on is just not egregious, but is noticeable for me. PG-13 movies, it makes sense, because you can't show too much, but if it's R especially, like, I don't know, maybe I was spoiled with Alejandro Iñárritu and his glorious one takes, but that's just me. And the only other complaint I had, honestly, was like mild pacing issues. It's a tricky line to toe, right? Because I love how the film is marketed as like, go, 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 action, 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 violence. But a pleasant surprise, the film does slow down to give us some like character development, to give us some more emotional moments, fill in with some backstory, to rest in those lanes of uh, both religious and political commentary. That's all well and good. But sometimes it also, and I put mildly, emphasis on mildly, Sometimes the pacing is mildly affected by this and not severely, but enough where I'm like, I, I, I just, I would feel it here and there in tiny spurts, but just a personal little nitpick slash gripe for me. End of the day, I highly recommend Monkey Man. If you're a fan of like action revenge thriller where it's like, oh, someone did this to me. Now I'm going to work my way up through this like video game boss levels of just mini bosses and then get to the big bad and try to right some wrongs to classic revenge. And you don't mind blood and some people getting stabbed in places and just ultimately messed up physically. If you don't mind any of that kind of stuff, you're in for a really good time. I think this is a great start for Dev Patel. Compared to some of the directorial debuts I normally review on this channel, hit or straight up miss, brilliant job it's clear that he has talent behind the camera as well as in front of it it's not going to be for everybody but i would be confident in saying even with my gripes about it i would give monkey man a very high four out of five i give it a very high four out of five out of all the revenge thrillers that exist in this subgenre of film it's definitely up there will it make my top 10 for the year uh, mm, I don't know about that, but I had a really good time and I would definitely watch it again. See it in theaters, highly recommend it. Otherwise, definitely stream it when it comes out. Thank you guys and gals so much for watching and stay tuned for the next episode of whatever movie I review. And goodbye, travelers.